Alright guys, welcome to the next episode of the CrossFit Games season. It is quarterfinals. This is the 2023 season. We are kicking off the more advanced stages. The workouts were announced today, March 16th, at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And right now what we're looking at is we are going over the standards of this workout. And test number one. So I did test one today, and then I followed up and did test two uh, an hour after. This workout is not what I expected from Boz, but all five workouts have Bosman's signature all over them. And I think that it is exciting that we are seeing a new standard movement. I loved the interpretation of handstand push-ups with a little Boz twist of the wall facing um, handstand push-ups. Now I'm gonna go through this workout like I usually do. I'm gonna go over some things I wish I would've done a little bit differently in order to help you guys improve your scores if you're retesting or if you're doing test number one uh, tomorrow when, or whenever you see this video or where you're watching it. But for, to me, it's 9.30 at night. We're recording this and then tomorrow I'll be taking on repeat two and then doing three. Well, test three first and then repeating number two. So we're looking at our standards here. We have 225 loaded up on the barbell. Showing you guys the weights and everything here. Um, making sure everything is set as can be. Now, one thing I did not like about this workout is logistically speaking, I took up all of Brandon's gym and that is the gentleman with the tape measure there. I legit took up the whole floor space and he has a smaller, medium sized gym, but logistically to do this with a 25 foot demand with a handstand walk and the rings, the wall space and space for a barbell. Logistically, this workout is not affiliate friendly. As you can see, where I'm using this camera, you have the rings on the right, the wall pad um, in red mat, the barbell, and then the 25 foot tape lines. Legit takes up the whole floor. Where I'm currently standing is like the area around where you would warm up, where people would check in. There's an area off to the side. You can't see where people place their bags. There's the, white, uh, the whiteboard and all that good stuff. But legitimately, I'm taking up like his whole entire space, um, which I didn't like. And a couple of the other workouts too, which we'll get into as I do these breakdowns. But again, for these affiliates, like people who have to run multiple heats and have multiple people and athletes competing, it is going to be very, very difficult to squeeze everybody in. I know Training Think Tank talked about last year how like there was a set schedule from like 9 a.m. I don't know what the time frame was, but literally from like 9 a.m. to like 7 p.m. Like they were just running heats of people because they were just like a factory of quarterfinals, semifinals, games level athletes there. So I wonder if other affiliates experience the same. But again, I just didn't like that I took up this whole gym. I kind of felt like a, a turd because he did have class after this. So I was glad to finish it like right before they started because otherwise I'm in the way and they can't run their class, which is the main reason people go there. It's not the, the Josh Beaker show, but I'm very thankful that Brandon opened up his doors, his gym to me. He judged me. Again, wonderful human being all in black, except the fact that he doesn't like Metallica. Um, that hurt. Currently right now, I'm resting. I have my stim on my back, hydrating, drinking water, and just taking time to kind of decompress, unload, and we'll watch a movie with my wife or an episode um, for whatever she chooses. But for now, we are getting set up for this workout. I have it on my phone here to watch and to dissect and see what's going on here. So currently, we are getting ready. I just walked off of screen. I'm gonna fast forward this to the workout. There's a 10 second clock, nine, eight, seven, six, five. And I'm doing this so when I edit it, I can just snip everything in there. Three, two, one, start. Here we go, the 225 barbell. Honestly, the front squats were a no factor. They just took up time and honestly, they let the upper body have rest. So here we're going with a normal front, 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 front rack grip at 225. I want clean reps. I want to make sure I'm hitting depth and standing up all the way. I know when I watch some people's video submissions, they are not going to be as clean with the repetitions. I just know that that's going to happen. Same thing with the rings um, and even probably handstand push-ups. But racks, thank you for changing my weights and taking off the 40 pounds. 225 felt pretty solid. I've done quite a few sets of like the 10, 8, 6, 4, 2 with the front squat. Uh, last couple weeks, I've really been building up heavy, heavy. Uh, last week, I hit like a... Uh, 375, 385, so I knew this barbell weight wasn't going to be an issue. I'm really excited to see how that pays off too with a clean and jerk for the box jump workout tomorrow. These handstand. Again, Bosman 
got to give credit where credit's due. I love the beginning of this test because it is a heavy barbell. You have to control front rack. It's a much different game, racking it from the floor. And then 225 feet of handstand walking. I don't think there's ever been a workout or any workout in recent memory I've programmed where I'm straight up walking even over 100 feet at a time. I think the most I've ever done in a workout is like 50 feet max. So feeling this pump, feeling this test, it was, I think, a lot of what CrossFit is. And I'm very happy to see that this is the start of it. Again, logistically, not happy about it, but to test this, I was very pleased with one, how the body performed. Considering the back um, injury and the wrist injury, this, this was freaking me out. But uh, by the grace of God, I kind of just was able to turn that part of my brain off and execute. Even with like every single hand placement with my left, a lot of pain. What you will see too with my deterioration of my handstand walks is I will start to deviate to my left because I wasn't stable and I wasn't giving and pushing as hard as I could. I was very light on the left hand. And my right hand was having to kind of do a lot more of the work. So honestly, I felt a bigger pump in my right shoulder, but my left wrist was on fire the entire time. Uh, and you'll start to see that I take slightly longer breaks just to let the shoulders come down. Ideally, the game plan was to move as fluently fast, grace with pace for these handstand walks. Again, never done 225 feet of handstand walking um, in one clip. So again, I wanted to see how that felt. I wanted my ring muscle-ups to be done in three sets or less. And I knew that, again, the barbell wasn't going to be a very limiting factor. It was just kind of don't drop the bar, don't be a wuss, crank out unbroken sets, and get back to the gymnastics movements. So again, I like the complexity and the change of these movements. Handstand walk, highly advanced. Ring muscle-up, highly advanced. Um, strict chest-facing um, handstand push-ups, highly advanced. It was hardest handstand push-up I've ever done. But back to the barbell, we've completed our ninth 25 foot um, handstand walk, 185 on the barbell. I did belt up for each and every rep. Um, again, for performance base, I think it saves me a lot of energy in my core that I would need for the rings. That's why I belted even 225, 185, and the 135. Because again, 15 reps, not an issue but for this. Don't forget to breathe because you're bracing so much and the belt is on. If you forget to breathe at the top, why you will see a slight pause. It's just to get enough oxygen to not want to pass out. Um, I didn't want my heart rate to be skyrocketing before the ring muscle ups. So I wanted to be as quick and smooth with these reps and take that extra breath and pause as needed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, looking at hit depth, making sure that I am clean with each repetition and smooth. Again, we're not trying to bounce around too much. Rex, thank you again for taking off that 185 and getting down to the 135 barbell. With the rings, um, definitely felt better on the shoulders and arms and, and lungs and breathability than I did on 23.3. I was able to hit a much larger set. Um, if you have rings, I would definitely go with the shorter rig rings, not the long strapped rings for this workout. Again, 15 is not a huge clip, but if you can knock these out in two sets, three sets, you're golden. I am not somebody that is very strong on the rings yet. It's still something I need to work on in the off season. I would say this is my best set of 15 ring muscle ups I've ever done, especially since it's all in one go. I did need to remove the belt as I felt it was a little restrictive on my breathing and my actual kip back in the rings. Um, a very minor issue. I don't think it was the cause of why I could only do six. The plan was either to go five, five, five or six, five, four. And I'm very glad that Brandon and I discussed that talked it through, I said, hey, the most ring muscle ups I've ever done are broken by 15 or 16 reps. Three sets is a good uh, way to divide up the 15 total. Very happy with how I was kicking back here. My legs were a little straighter than they usually were. The shoulder felt very loose and I was engaged. The wrist held up well. I could feel it a little bit when I would swing out, but then when I get like that weightlessness, I could kick back into it real hard and it wasn't too much of an issue. On the press of the dip, I could feel the wrist a little bit. The back held up, which I was very happy with. So here we go, entering the last set of four. I wanted to not miss a rep and waste any energy. So I took mentally an extra five, six, seven seconds before I even stepped up to the rings. And I actually felt pretty good because my heart rate was coming down. I felt like I probably should have gotten to the rings a little bit quicker. I was fine. Um, but I didn't know that until, again, I completed the last set of those four ring muscle ups. But again, I think I could have gotten to the rings back, you know, five, 10 seconds quicker. So here we are at the last set of four. I got some, I have some good turnover and pop. 
I'm feeling really strong and stable. Again, very happy with how these last couple reps went. I definitely felt like I could have done a couple more. And just making sure, again, full lockout. I'm not trying to cheat any repetitions here. Um, not trying to end up on an Andrew Hiller video. I was pretty happy with how I was moving. I knew I was moving at a pretty good clip. I wish I could have seen the clock to know how quickly I was moving. Um, but also, too, I think it can be an advantage just not having to focus on that and just getting everything going. So suicide grip here. One, I knew the second I cleaned this barbell, it wasn't even on my chest, and there was no time to switch it. You will you see the barbell is slightly tilted here, and I think it was tilted on the 185 as well. That's what happens when you don't set up properly and your hands just like grab and go. So keep that in mind, but this didn't bother me too much. There's a slight deviation tilting this way, and I did feel that towards the last set, uh, last couple reps of the 21, but overall, like, these repetitions are a rest for your arms, and you just need to make sure that, one, you're breathing and you're moving, and you're doing them as quickly and efficiently as possible. There should be no reason for any upper-level athlete to drop this barbell. You should just suffer through because you don't need your legs for pretty much the entire workout. Um, again, the front squats were kind of just there as like a no factor. You should be able to move through them, suffer through them. You should be able to do unbroken sets. These strict handstand push-ups. So I finished. Um, I don't know why I did this. So I finished at the seven minute mark. I think I did a set of four here. Very odd. I should have gone a little bit more like you see in a freestanding handstand push-up, like a tripod. I was very upright and down, which definitely affected um, my push and output. I should have come more into a tripod position to where my hands are more here and my head is brought further away from the mat and pressed into. I should have gained it a little bit more. Also, too, I don't know why I was walking down from the wall. I knew that burnt up a ton of energy, but I guess I was just used to like the wall walk standard. And that's where new movements like this are kind of a shock factor. I should have just barrel rolled forward like I did and started again. But I think I did this for about three or four sets until I just went, screw it, just fall. Like, you're wasting so much energy. And I guarantee you, me walking down cost me a couple sets of three and would have taken, negated a set of two from my score. <clears throat> These were extremely difficult. To all the big guys out there, I salute you because I felt way closer and way more upright to the wall than I ever have before on a typical standard wall walk. <clears throat> Again, great standard though, great way to end on a very fatigued state for 21 high level repetitions of a wall facing straight handstand push up. I love that that was incorporated and the community got to try that out after seeing it in the games. Hindsight 2020, probably should have practiced that a lot more. I will say though, in the gym, I have been doing a lot of seated strict dumbbell press. So this wasn't anything new, it was just to the point where my shoulders were so gassed that small sets is all I could muster. Um, again, I don't know why I walked down from the wall. Very disappointed because, again, I really do believe that took out one extra repetition every single time I picked back up. The pump was inc incredibly, um, yeah, not incredibly, the pump was there. Like, my arms definitely felt worse here than in 23.3 doing the strict handstand push-ups. Um, at this point, I was just super gassed, not in the lungs, not in the legs. Just the arms. You're just managing shoulder fatigue at this point. And I think you guys will understand that throughout this workout. That again, the front squats are no factor. This is the workout right here. Whoever can get through this in the fewest sets possible and do it the most efficiently, you are going to win this workout. I don't think there's much I could have done any quicker other than bigger sets on the ring muscle ups, a faster handstand walk turnover. The squats were pretty consistent through. Um, but, but again, the workout is pretty much won here. And this is where I was. A little disappointed with myself, but also, too, in the grand scheme of just being able to be in fighting shape and compete, I was very blessed and thankful for that opportunity. Um, great support. Behind the camera, you have my wife and my mom, so thank you guys for being there. I love you all. Hope to see you guys either tomorrow or Saturday whenever I compete again. Um, but finishing up these last few reps, really trying to just squeeze out these twos. I don't know if I hit a set of three in here. I just knew at that point it was good just to kind of barrel roll forward. I'm glad I made that adjustment and change as we're coming up to the 10 and a half minute mark. Brandon's checking the clock. Again, my arms absolutely spent. Everything in the shoulders, a little bit of the traps, but really just purely the delts were on fire. Triceps felt fine um, until we got actually into the hole, but like they they were okay. Again, legs, no, no issue. And you will see too that I'm kind of tilting onto that left hand on your right of the screen, my left hand though, like it was incredibly painful to do these repetitions um, with whatever impingement is happening in my wrist. 
was not worried that his hand was going to break, but dude, it definitely took the mental side out of it. And just trying to get those hands in position when you're super pumped up, you need that extra level of focus to pull your hands into the spot where the tape needs to be in order to finish this workout. So trying to get that under control, and this is the last repetition of the workout. I think we finished at 11.23 here. Man, I was fighting. I don't think I could have done it any faster without failing more repetitions and ultimately costing more time. But I'm really, really happy here to finish in the, under the time cap under three and a half minutes or over three and a half minutes with time to spare. I think I executed the plan well. The body responded really well. And again, just super blessed to have the opportunity to compete. So that's another episode of the CrossFit Games 2023 season. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, peace. Much love.